Hey, Patrick here. Today we have an interesting little project we're going to be doing. We're going to be putting together a digital clock. Uh, this is going to be kind of a building blocks process for us because um, over the next few weeks I hope to make this a much more complex project than it is right now. Uh, but to start, let's start with a very small portion of it, which is where we get the actually the actual clock working. I'm going to go up, go ahead and demo what that's going to look like right now for you. So we'll go back over, open up our browser just so you can see the final product, and then we'll break it down piece by piece. All right. We'll go to our local host, WebGL, and from here you can see the final piece. You'll see also over here we're getting a really good frame rate on it. It's updating every, every second. Actually, it's updating more frequently than that. It just only changes the time every second or so. All right, so how do you make something that, that that's really efficient like this? Well, let's go in and look at our code. All right. So here's our code right now. Uh, what you are looking at right now are, here's our current time variable, um, the previous hour, previous minute, and pre previous second. And then we have an array right up top here. Um, you have an array for all the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. All right, so now why is this all broken up? Let's go in and take a look. All right, so the very first function you see is going to be our check time function, which is going to call these other three functions, check hour, check min, check sec. Basically, these functions are all going to be the same thing. Um, it's just the time in which they're going to be working is going to be different. All right, so first we have our create meshes. All right, so what does this function do? Essentially what this function is going to do is cr go through um, each of the arrays and create all the meshes that we're going to need for this scene. So our first one is going to go um, starting with the zero position on the array all the way up to the, uh, sixth, the 59th position on it. It's going to go through and do a new mesh. And it's going to call this function on that eye, the set zeros function. And then it's going to set these properties, the size and the height on it, and give it the material, which we've just defined as this base mesh following material. Okay, what's the set, set zeros function right here? Um, plus this little colon. All right, set, all set zeros is going to do is put the time function right here in the correct format. So you'll see if time equals zero, time equals the string zero zero else if time e else uh, time zero plus time and that turns it into a string and sets that string equal to um, that just basically putting it in the correct format pretty simple and straightforward then we have our positions getting set now I have divided this whole thing into uh, an array with minutes array with seconds and then array with hours because the hour format is going to be slightly different on them. So we create all of our meshes ahead of time and this is going to be important to do because it's going to reduce the inefficiency of the seam. Uh, I found that when I was originally setting this up if you add a mesh, subtract a mesh, it's really really going to be taxing on the system. So you don't want to create anything from new uh, or scratch every every animation frame essentially what you want to do is create everything in the beginning just add it to your scene or subtract it from your scene and this is going to be the most efficient way to do it so that's the way we are taking that's the approach we're taking right here okay so now let's take a look and see how this function works all right so we have our current time which is going to be the new date function and with the new date function we can apply the uh, get seconds function in this case there's also a get minutes and a get hours function so what this is going to do is just get the current time in the amount of seconds okay and then what it's going to do is check if it's if the previous second was null which basically means that when we first started out this var variable we haven't set it to anything so if that's the case, then run this function. So that's going to be your very first uh, condition. And then the other thing is if the previous act does not equal the current time get seconds. So basically, as long as this 
these two values are different, then it's going to call this function. And as long as this is completely empty, it's going to call this function. So that's going to set up the whole basic scene. Then we have a if type of SRA does not equal undefined, which basically says if that's undefined, then um, if it's not undefined, then remove it from the scene, basically. So basically, as this function gets called, it's going to remove the previous time from the scene, which we have as defined as the SRA, the position on the SRA, which we have, which happens to be the second array, the position on it, which is defined as the the counter that we have for these the seconds, and it's going to remove that. Uh, the other possibility is that you'll see right here, current time gets seconds. That's the new value, and then we're just going to add that into the scene. So it's basically going to do the same thing right up top here, except it's going to do it on a minute basis. And then up here, it's going to do it on an hour basis. Okay. And then we have, you know, basically all these functions getting called. You have our check time function getting called in the render area um, and all of this other stuff. <clears throat> but essentially, as you can see, um, this is a very, very simple, simple function. Uh, gets the job done, creates the clocks. Uh, for the next portion of this, we're going to be looking at other ways we can kind of manipulate this scene itself and make it more and more impressive. Uh, one other thing I want to bring to your attention is that I've slightly modified the uh, this kind of this scene to console function. And this is really, really cool because if you go inspect an element on this, you remember if you're just calling that console log every render frame, it gets kind of annoying. So what, what I've done is created this scene to console, and that brings up some pretty useful information. Okay, so what does it bring up? First, it tells us the scene. In this case, it was unloading those arrays. I have it set to do that. I also have it set to give me the, the camera position. So you can create a nice lined up um, scene that way. So one of the things, this is a really helpful tool. Uh, for debugging or anything like that is you can make this and you can stick whatever values you want into it. So I'll show you where I have that being called right. There we go. So it should be under scene to console and then the scene to console function is going to be called right up here. So here it is getting called, creates this function, and it gives us a log of the scene, the camera position, and then on that one I had just happened to put the uh, the array value so I could look at all of those independently. Anyways, that's it for today, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe.